bit of a rainy day for using solar panels, but sun peeks through once in a while. So this location that we're at right now is owned by friends of ours. They're actually going to be installing that greenhouse that you saw that we had given away to friends. This is where it's going. Wow. I'm doing a big road trip later this summer, sort of a fly fishing backcountry mountain trip. And I'm going to base camp. We travel around but base camp in each spot and be able to plug in the computer and the camera batteries to charge. Anyway, I can't get electricity to the cabin. It's too remote. There's no lines within, I don't even know, 10 miles probably. Now I have a system set up inside the cabin, a permanent system. But if I don't get, uh, or if I'm using a lot of power, or if I'm not getting enough sun to, to uh, charge from the panels, then a backup like this is really good for me. So I can just keep these charged, use them occasionally just to get them cycling, but I can keep them sort of in storage as a backup or leave them connected to the solar panel and get a trickle charge. Or I can take them into town and charge them quickly and then bring them back to the cabin fully charged as a backup. So for me it makes sense, but for you, if you don't live off-grid or don't need off-grid power, this still functions as a backup system for a house, which is awesome. So using the extension cord to go from 30 amp to 30 amp beside your distribution box, your uh, fuse box or panel, um, you can power those items in your house by selecting the right fuses. If you buy two of these units, then not only are you putting out 120 volts to run those things like lights and freezer, but you can also chain these two together and run this. So you're plugging in this to your house and now you're getting 240 volts. So you can run things like your deep well pump and uh, um, heater units like your furnace or uh, what else like uh, a stove an oven or something like that anything that requires 240 even a dryer so that's really helpful so it's not just for off-grid use it's a really good home backup system
Kelly. I see you down there. Now I see you, but I can't come down there yet. I'm way up here, Paul. You see me? I see you wagging your tail, but I can't throw it from here.
This stove was in a, in a house about, what, I think it was a three hour drive from here. I bought it last year and it uh, was in, well, it was in a cottage, but somebody was living in it, renting it, living in it full time. And this was their only source of heat and cooking. So it was in use when we went there and took it apart and got it out of the cottage, my wife and I, and it, uh, had to be disassembled in order to lift it and get it out so we took it apart all these components off and now almost a year later I'm trying to figure out how to get it back together <laughs> of course uh, I thought I'd taken pictures but I can't find anything so I'll do what I can here and also I'm having a hard time all right <laughs> so far I haven't been able to find the hardware all the missing screws and things that we took out like the pins for there so I'm going to have to probably just cherry rig something with whatever, whatever I have in my toolboxes. Everybody who is nervous for commenting on how noisy the metal roof is going to be on the cabin. It is not on the cabin because of all the insulation, but this being exposed metal from the underside, so nothing to, to dampen the sound. It's definitely going to be noisy in here when it rains. It's not even raining hard yet. You can hear it. Not that I mind, I like the sound. And I'm sure now even, even inside the cabin, especially if the windows are open, I'll be able to hear the rain hitting this roof, that sound going inside the cabin.